But we do have black people that get on the radio every day in white-owned companies, white-owned stations with white-owned sponsors that play the role of hypersexualized, hypercriminalized male. I ask these advertisers, I say, I've got hundreds of songs a day that celebrate killing animals. Will you put them on your station? They said, no. I've got hundreds of songs a day that talk about assaulting women and, 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 and abusing kids. Would you put them on your station? They said, no. I said, I've got hundreds of songs a day that talk about murdering blacks. Would you put them on your stations? They said, well, that depends. Depends on what? Who it's done by and who it's branded for. Because if we can get black folks to sing about it and we can brand it for our youngest black audiences, I think there's money to be made. I think there's American appetites to see these people that way. I said, how can you say that? They said, well, look, it's what these artists know. It's what they, black people, uh, create. It's a matter of fact, our surveys say it's what they want to hear, which speaks of a sickness. How do we live in a society where somebody says, you know what, I'm inspired to write a song that celebrates murdering another person. And then a person says, I'd like to put that on my station. Another person said, I'd like to pay for it. And then there's people out here in the audience that go, I'd love to hear it, as long as it's black guys. Because even white people buy rap music, buy this type of stuff, because we know that when we want to hear about killing each other, we know who to turn to for that type of inspiration. We call it our music, we say we own it. White people buy more rap than black people. Yeah, but we're very careful to turn it down at the stoplight when other black people are there. Why? Because we know we're just pretending for them it's, it's more authentic and real. I always ask the companies, what about your name? What about your brand? What about your value? And the largest radio company in the world said this, it's okay that we only have drug dealers on our black youth stations, we only have murders on our black youth stations, we support black charities. We give out water at the Martin Luther King Parade, I think we've got it covered. We've bought them off. Now, people get upset, the smartest guys in the room again, you're talking about censorship. I don't believe that. I believe in, cen I believe in free art, make whatever you want. I believe you should make music about anti-Semitism. I believe you should make music about killing dogs. I believe in this country you should make music uh, uh, about uh, bashing homosexuals and driving them behind trucks. I believe you should make music about uh, stringing people up on, on, on trees. I believe you should make music about killing Whitey. I believe you should make all that music. But I also believe that in the mainstream marketplace, people should hesitate associating their name with certain content. You know, there's certain stuff you can't buy at the store. Certain stuff you can't get on iTunes because their brand doesn't want it. But if you want to hear black people celebrating killing black people, they got thousands and thousands and thousands of those things to sell you. I don't think it's about censorship. I think it's about American cultural hypocrisy. Because here's the truth. These black entertainers, they can't sing just about anything. There's some stuff that'll get them fired. And they get dropped and they get fired and they get slapped on the wrist and they get disciplined all the time. Why? Because sometimes they step over the bounds. A very famous case is what happened with Rick Ross. Rick Ross is the Mammy Two Shoes, one of the many Mammy Two Shoes of our day. He's, he's a black entertainer in a world carved out for him and a role carved out for him by white entertainment companies. And one day he talked about, in the middle of a song that celebrated dealing drugs and killing blacks, he made a reference to date rape. And when he made that reference to date rape, that set social media on fire. That got 100,000 petitions in 24 hours. Hey, buddy, date rape is no joke. That had white people standing outside of Reebok in New York saying, you better take this seriously. We're tired of a rape culture in America. One line in one song moved the masses. And you know what Reebok did? Did they stand by him and say, hey, we believe in freedom of speech. We believe in freedom of expression. It's just a song. Calm down. No, they fired his tail on the spot. The president came out and said, this goes against our high standards. He's gone against the values of our brand. Shame on Rick Ross. We're disappointed. He doesn't know how serious date rape is. And when I saw that, I thought, wow, how convenient. Isn't that amazing? But here's what really happened. It's not their brand. It's not their values. Rick Ross went off script. He was hired to get black customers. And they think that black customers go with black bait. And in America, black bait is the hyper-criminalized, hyper-sexualized portrayal of black people. And as long as he had sung about that, the stuff that got him hired, he still have a job at Reebok. But when he touched other sensitivities that affect us, he lost his job. See, the truth is, it's not they that need to change. It's we that need to change. We, we created the lies. We created them for our profit. We, the, we own the companies. We own the record labels. We own the advertisers. And we keep putting it out. And it's this that's got to change. I thought about it. You know what? I, I wonder if White Mike could get anybody's attention on this. So I stood outside of a Walmart. And I said, hey, uh, I don't think killing cops and killing blacks is very cool. And you know what? It only took seven weeks of Mike Mike standing out there. And they wrote a letter and said, yeah, we don't think it's cool either. We're going to pull our name off of that. The largest retailer in the world had never considered that maybe their commercial shouldn't be right before or after a song about young black men being gunned down. 
And I realized this, that black murder is normal, but it should not be. And I realized the importance at the coffee table, at every headline, every pastor's gathering, every family gathering, to say, you know what, these black lives matter. It's not just another black kid. These are human beings. I'm doing my best in every way, shape, and form. Talks like this everywhere I can go to say, you know what, I was born in a world where black murder was normal. My kids were born into a world where black murder is normal. But I don't want to die in a world where black murder is normal. And my five years or ten years away, I don't know, but I'm screaming as high as I can. Let's feel this pain and let's lift our voice to tell the lies. They are not criminals. They are not deviants. And their lives are just as important as ours. Thank you very much. <laughs>